We are just a little over three weeks away from the start of another Razorback football season. The excitement may be at an all-time high. Steve Sullivan along with Allison Courtney. Hard to believe this is Bobby Petrino's fourth year, and I thought I knew Coach until I saw your interview with Bobby Petrino. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we, we, we think of Coach Petrino as this really serious guy. We see him on the sidelines. He's yelling at the officials. He's yelling at the players. He's described as strict, boring, quiet off the field. Monotone. Monotone. <laughs> but it was a different side of Coach Petrino that I saw when I asked him an off-the-wall question at the Sugar Bowl earlier this year, and it was that connection that led to this interview. And I got them to all attempt laissez les bon temps rouler, <laughs> and I really need you to attempt it as well. So, Let's hear it again. Laissez les bon temps rouler. One more time. <laughs> See, if you do something three times, then you got a chance to get it. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Pretty good. One more time. Let the good times roll. Let yeah. the good times roll. I like it. Good, good term. That response from Coach Petrino surprised a lot of people. Maybe because we saw him smile. Maybe because he rarely talks about anything but football. Maybe it was because this is how most of us see the man who has led the University of Arkansas Razorbacks football team for the last three seasons. People don't seem to know a lot about who Bobby Petrino is. A lot of times people think of... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know when I you know, ask the question... there's one picture of me yelling and then they always have to use it. The same, there's just, just one. I, I one know. Time. I've only seen you yell one, one on the time, sidelines. That's yeah. it. Getting Coach Petrino to agree to this interview took several weeks. But once we got inside his office, it didn't take long for him to get comfortable and open up. I know this is what you like before a game. This is going to be an uh, intense hot interview. All so right. Hot tamales are what the seemingly always confident coach can be seen chewing on before every game. Just something as you go out on the field to handle your nervous energy, I guess. Uh huh. You get nervous? Sometimes, yeah. Like about every day. Every day you're nervous? Well, when you go out on the field for practice, mm -hmm. you know, you've done all this preparation, you've had the meetings with the players, but every day you go out there during stretch and your your thoughts are, okay, how are we going to perform today? How's our quarterbacks going to do? Is the defense going to step forward? So there's always some nervous energy there. Surprise number one, Bobby Petrino gets nervous. And more surprises would come as we dug into his life off the field. I think, first of all, that when you, the most of the people that see me see me during a game mm -hmm. on television, um, they usually want to put the camera on the sideline when there's some controversy yeah. and there's emotion involved. Sure. That's why you put the, the camera on the sideline. So I think most people see that side of me, um, and that's understandable, I guess. But when he's not on the sidelines, and especially when he's with his family or talking about them, Bobby Petrino seems as opposite from this guy as you can imagine. Family is everything to Coach Petrino. It's common to see his granddaughter Brianna in his arms after games, his wife Becky by his side, and his children, Kelsey, Nick, Bobby, and Katie in the press room. Even his mother Patsy and father Bob travel in from Montana for the big games. You do have a lot of time, a lot of commitments, so I think it's real important that you, you bring your family to your profession and they get to really see what goes on. Did Becky know what she was getting into when she <laughs> said yes to you? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think she had any idea. Coach Petrino always knew he wanted to be a football coach. After all, it is in his blood. I remember getting out of school. We were about two or three blocks from where my dad's practice field was. I would get out of school. I would immediately be over there at, at Carroll College and either be on the practice field uh, helping him or being a, a defensive end for the triple option read. It was just a way of life. And, and uh, I knew from a very, very young age what I was going to do, what I wanted to do. And I'm just very fortunate it all worked out that way. Still 
Bowl coach Petrino admits there were some detours on his road to becoming a highly sought after head football coach. There was a point when I thought I wanted to be a truck driver and, and I tried that. I drove a produce truck, really didn't like that. You're out on the road a lot. Um, I was good at being a milkman except for the runaway truck. Right, I've heard that. Yeah, that wasn't a good deal. Certainly no one's crying over that spilled milk. <laughs> Thankfully for Razorback fans, he was a lot better at coaching, and Petrino will tell you he owes much of his success to his father. Does he still give you advice, criticize? Well, he always says, we always had a rule in our family, once you turn 21, you know, you're on your own. So I always ask him, what would you think today, or what do you think of this? And the first thing he'll say is, you're seven times three, you got to make up your own mind, and then I'll just pause and wait for maybe a second, and then he'll tell me what he really thinks. <laughs> Bobby Petrino is the son of a football coach. His brother Paul coaches. Now his sons, I know Bobby Jr. played at Fayetteville, mm -hmm. and Nick actually played a little at the University of Arkansas. The big question, will either of these two, after watching their dad, uncle, and granddad coach, right. get into coaching? Well, you know, Coach Petrino has four kids, two girls, two boys. All of them are pretty athletic, but when it comes to his sons, you have to wonder, <laughs> do they want to join this family business? Here's what he had to say about that. Bobby Petrino grew up the son of a football coach. He's the brother of a football coach. The game was obviously a way of life for the Petrinos, so it would seem only fitting that Coach Petrino's own sons would also grow up to join the family business. Nick really wants to be a coach. I think he, he's known that for a long time. That, that's kind of how he grew up, wanting to do it. Uh, my other son, Bobby, uh, never had any interest in coaching. You know, he's changed his mind a number of times right now, but he, he really knew from a young age that he didn't think he was going to coach. Why is that, you think? He's smart. <laughs> he got all the brains in the family. Instead of football, it's collegiate golf. At the University of Louisville, his youngest daughter, Katie, excels in. Kelsey, his oldest, is living in Fayetteville, contemplating enrolling in law school. We caught up with her at the spring game in April. Just talk about growing up with your dad as a football coach your entire life. Um, I mean, it's crazy. Lots of moving, lots of meeting new friends, um, but exciting all at the same time. If people asked you how to describe your dad, what would you say? I would say he is a perfectionist, um, which is why I think he's been so successful. Kelsey says as great of a coach as her dad is, he's an even better grandpa. I think it's one of the proudest moments he's had. He's a great grandfather. He loves Brianna. Uh, he'll get down on the floor and crawl around with her. And most people are pretty surprised to hear that. But I didn't have to spend much time with Coach Petrino before I realized he could have spent the entire interview just talking about Brianna. And I love this picture of of Brianna and you. That's a great yeah, picture. That's pretty cool. It's, yeah. it's great to have a, a, a granddaughter. She's real special to me. And did you ever imagine yourself as a grandfather? No, I, mean, what kind I of still grandfather? don't. What? I still don't picture myself as a grandfather. Well, you're a young grandfather. grandfather. I mean, Fifty so. is a young grandfather. Right. So what kind of grandfather are you? Oh, I'm in a spoiler. It is, in fact, family that helped to distract Coach Petrino from the criticism he's faced over the years as a man who moved a lot, who left teams and fans at inopportune times. He was called every name in the book and described as a coach who was self-centered, cold-hearted, and money-hungry. Do you read much about yourself? Not a lot, no. I, I always hear about it, though, whether it's my children, my wife, my parents. What's the biggest misconception about Bobby Petrino? That's a hard one for me to say, you know, um, because I don't really know all the, the um, misconceptions out yeah. there. But, you know, I, there's been times when people have talked about moving around, taking other jobs, doing that. But, you know, I never felt that way. Uh, and my head coaching experience in, in college football, I've had two jobs. One at Louisville that I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And now my job here at the University of Arkansas, which has been awesome. Um, as an assistant coach, one thing that you try to do is, is do your job that, that you're asked to do the best you possibly can. And then when people come to try to hire you away, I think it's your responsibility to your family, to your, your kids, to take a look at it and see if that's the best situation and, and gives you an advantage. Would you ever consider writing a book? 
I got a couple titles for books, but oh, uh, I have not, have not written them yet. Let's hear the they titles. They probably would be controversial, so uh, I'm not sure I should throw the titles out there. But oh. it, would be a, it would be probably, they'd probably sell. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the first title that we have is, is a book about um, the Auburn ordeal when I was the head coach at the University of Louisville. Um, when the phone rang and I answered the phone when the AD landed in Louisville, he said, the eagle has landed. So that would be a good title for that one. And if I ever decided to write a book uh, about um, our deals in, in Atlanta, I think it would be a, a great title, that uh, One Big Bite. If those books are ever written, it will probably be after Coach Petrino leaves the football field for good. Up next, I'll ask him about life after football, how he feels about Razorback fans, and those all-black uniforms you may have heard about. Yeah, I've heard those rumors for a while, but will we see the Hogs in those black uniforms this season? Stick around. Welcome back to War Memorial Stadium. And Allison, we've heard Coach uh, talk about how he gets nervous before even practice mm -hmm. and has talked about his kids. How about the fans? What do you have to say about those Razorback fans? Of course, I asked him about that. He loves the fans. I think after three years, he really feels connected to the fan base here in Arkansas. He understands the heart of Hog fans. Love talking about that, but I also found out what he doesn't like talking about, and that's the R word. Retiring is something most of us look forward to, but when you love this, love your job as much as Bobby Petrino, it becomes a subject he's uncomfortable discussing. Do you think about retirement at all? Not that 50 is time for retirement, but do you think about life after this? No, not at all. You know, I can't imagine what I would do if you, if you didn't have this um, competitiveness and the um, just the fire to get up to go to work every day and, you know, work at something to be the best that there is in, in the United States. He's often accused of focusing on the game 24-7. He'll tell you that's not true, but admits to some his dedication might seem a little over the top. Is this game film or, or, or do you watch a lot of uh, film? I do here? watch a lot of film in here. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, one of our scrimmages. Our, I watched it this morning. Have you ever spent the night in here? I have a couple times, yes ma'am. Working long, long hours? Working hours, mainly during two-a-days. Are you really able to relax and, and not think about football while you're on vacation? Summer vacation, um, you know, the first 10 days are pretty good. After that, you start getting antsy, and, and uh, you know, Becky always says, you always enjoy the first week we're gone, and then after that, you know, you're, you're somewhere else all the time. On the field, in his head, trying to figure out precisely how his team is going to win every single game. And frankly, most Razorback fans are thrilled with that. Talk a little bit um, about Arkansas and how the fans here are fun and are crazy and this is our team. It's really been exciting for me, you know, and, and when I first think about that, I think about uh, in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl and how cold it was and we had 55,000 people there, everybody in red, everybody staying there through the overtime and how much that helped our football team. I remember the, the first time we played LSU in Little Rock and getting on the bus and heading to the stadium and seeing all the people there even prior to the game and on the golf course and through the, the hog walk and you know it, it was just really amazing to me and then this year down in New Orleans you know to be able to take over the city of New Orleans like we did I went to a basketball game and the first time I'm at, at the basketball game and it was completely packed and the whole place is calling the hogs I knew that, hey, once you get this in your heart, this is a pretty cool deal. This is something that nobody else in America does. And being different suits Coach Petrino just fine. He's yet to get on the social networking bandwagon like other coaches. I always feel like, okay, what's the best thing for our program? What's the best thing for landing a recruit? Um, and I always think that, okay, if I'm on Facebook, if I do tweet, is that what you call it? Yeah. You know. Do I have a more more of a chance to get a guy because of that or lose one? And let's say so many messages come out on Facebook and there's one great player, I don't answer that message. I have a chance to lose that player as opposed to get it. Coach Petrino never says never, so there's still a chance he'll start tweeting one day and still a chance we could see the Razorbacks in those non-traditional uniforms that have been rumored about for years.
Well, I've heard this story about these black uniforms that you've designed and that are going to be revealed in some big, huge, explosive way. Now, where did you hear that story at? I, that, that amazes me because there is no black uniforms designed. Uh -huh. We did at one time when we first got here. We had all these different uniforms that we wanted to look at and um, we did put a couple of them out that were black, mm -hmm. mainly just to get a lot of people talk. I should have tweeted it. Get a lot of people to talk about it. That, you are catching Everybody on. Everybody wanted what to I mean. talk about black uniforms. Yes. But I do understand the tradition here. Mm -hmm. um, but I do also believe that you know uniforms are number one for the players that are wearing them. We need to feel good, need to feel excited, need to feel good about it. And it really is all about his players with Coach Petrino. We know he plays bad cop, but he also is comfortable playing good cop. Do you think there are more days that your players love playing for you or can't stand you are playing, being out there? I really think they all understand, you know, what we're striving for. And, and they do know we're all in it together. I think they, they understand now that, you know, one of the roles of coaches is to motivate them and push them and, and help them work to get the best out of their ability. And, uh, you know, they, sometimes they need you to give them extra motivation. Sometimes they need a hug. Sometimes they need you to tell them that you love them. And, and, that and you, you do that. See that. You hug your players? Oh, definitely. Yeah. His relationship with his players may be good, but when it comes to his relationship with the refs on the field, well, you know. Would you make a good official? No, terrible. How would you handle a guy like yourself if you were official? I'd kick him out of the game. <laughs> coach Petrino admits he's an aggressive, passionate, and fiery football coach, but says he's way more than what people see on TV and in pictures. And that's why he agreed to share his other side with you. What's one word that sums you up? Mm, I don't think you could sum anybody up in one word. You know, I really don't believe that. I think there's too many things that, that make a person What's tick. two words that say? <laughs> I don't know. I love the game of football. Mm -hmm. I love my family, and uh, those are the things that really drive me. Um, and, I, and I love working with young people. I think when that's a special thing to be able to bring young guys in, be able to help them fight through obstacles. They have a goal out there that you're really helping them to reach and achieve the goal and all and then the whole time you're educating them for if they don't get that goal they still have something to do the rest of their life so it's a it's a great profession that I'm in now you turned 50 last month is that right oh, you're gonna tell the world Welcome back. As we wrap things up tonight, some random questions for Coach. And Allison, you did something that no other reporter in the state has been able to do since Bobby Petrino arrived. You got Coach out of his comfort zone. I think so, <laughs> yeah. We asked some pretty off-the-wall questions. I warned him the interview was going to be less about football and more about the man off the field. But I don't think he was prepared for some of these. Take a look. Was that a big birthday for you, turning 50? Not really. You know, I, I get to be um, eligible for the senior tour now, so I got that going for me. I need to polish up on my golf game and see if we can get there. One of the moments that, that was really crazy was calling the Hogs on national TV. And, you know, I really didn't know it was going to be on national TV. We were, they were teaching me how to do it in the team meeting room before the press conference. And, and the first time you do it, it's a little awkward. You're like, oh, really? Do you uh, ever go grocery shopping? Or when's the last time you went grocery shopping, Bobby Petrino? I go grocery shopping, yeah. Really? I go with Becky. She okay. takes me around. I get to push the cart, and I always sneak a few extra things in there. Which one are you most likely to win, Dancing with the Stars or American Idol? Well, I can't sing. Okay. And people don't dance like I used to, you know. Nobody swings and two steps anymore, so I'm likely to get kicked off both shows right away. In coaching, is there one special, one moment that is the most special to you? You know, when when you're going to take the field, that's a lot of fun, you know. And, and what I try to do is look at the the eyes of all our players and see what 
I think is going through their head and how they're feeling. Are they ready to play? Who's who needs to relax a little bit? And it's really a fun thing, and, and more so watching our players and, and seeing how they're going to react to running through the A and getting ready for the game. as we imagine the 2011 Razorbacks football team running through that A for the first time this season. And as we learned earlier, the opponent may be lowly Missouri State, but Coach Petrino will be nervous. Hey, thank you for what has been a enlightening half hour for me, getting to know the other side of Bobby Petrino. Hey, and thank you for tuning in and support those hogs. Have a great night.